good evening uh hope you guys uh, see my screen right yes yes okay um right uh before uh we start in the uh, our presentation about the j circuit architecture uh i am sharing the uh uh q a slide uh, okay guys uh, first of all uh, thanks for joining with us uh, to discuss about js architecture and uh, today presenters are i am durani rajit and my friend uh, kamitu dn again uh, yes here we go and in today's presentation, uh, we are talking about mainly talking about what is the JavaScript, uh, history of JavaScript, and what is TC39, and JS Engine, and finally we are talking about call stack, callback queue, and event loop. Um, when you are go to the what is the JavaScript, yes, uh, as you already know, JavaScript is a text-based programming language used both on client side and server side yes uh, this is always using for uh, get the web pages interaction and <clears throat> this uh, javascript is a single threaded uh, programming language and uh, we uh, let's talk about uh, even this is single single project sing, single threaded programming language uh, how it is uh, working uh, with the uh, asynchronous programming also and uh, then uh, when we are uh, Yes, uh, then uh, we can talk about why we need this JavaScript. Uh, and guys, uh, <coughs> uh, did, did you uh, ever know about what will happen if a uh, browser didn't compile the JavaScript? And have you any experience about that? If JavaScript no, uh, not, in, uh, no, not enabled with the web website, the web, web uh, website is, uh, it is a uh, we can we can view the website it's really fast and uh, and again uh, we can't uh, this haven't any autoplay in videos and uh, tell us what are the pop-ups uh, enter your emails and those things but <clears throat> uh, and also a uh, lot of uh, images images and the forms can't be submitted uh, without this javascript the reason is uh, if if we haven't this JavaScript, uh, it is working as a static pages. And uh, here I have added some popular websites uh, without the, when, when we are going to the uh, those websites without the uh, JavaScript. Yes, uh, this is the YouTube. Uh, you can't, you can't uh, see thumbnails also without this JavaScript uh, when, when we uh, disable this JavaScript. And then again, this is the Netflix, uh, Netflix also, uh, here has a pop-up looks like you have disabled JavaScript. Please enable JavaScript to restore full page functionality. And then again, Wikipedia. Wikipedia is it still works great. And uh, and guys, uh, <coughs> even we are uh, even uh, we are JavaScript developers. Uh, but uh, I say we can code even after disable JavaScript on our, on our browser. Yes, uh, this is a this is this is a fun fun fact, and uh, mm, so this just think about what, what I'm saying uh, and uh, ignore uh, if you did uh, didn't know anything. And then again, uh, do anyone know about who is the uh, founder of the JavaScript? No. Okay, Brendan Nage. JavaScript is uh, was invented by brendan niche in 1995 yes 1995 uh, is uh, just uh, invented uh, some more things and java also invented in 1995 and uh, yes uh, and then it was developed developed for uh, netscape netscape uh, netscape no, this is not the net netscape this is this is netscape uh, Netscape is the uh, ISP, uh, Internet Service Provider uh, thing, and the uh, <clears throat> their web browsers use this JavaScript, and uh, 
if I said more thing about uh, this Brendan Nage, uh, Brendan Nage is work for Java, uh, work for uh, work with Oracle, and they hired Netscape is hired Brendan Nage for uh, develop this JavaScript. And uh, <clears throat> then again, uh, after Net, uh, Netscape handled, Java, handled JavaScript over to ECMA, the Mozilla found, Foundation continued to develop JavaScript for the Firefox browser. Uh, this latest version uh, uh, they are using ES5 and again also uh, ECMA script 1 uh, ES1 uh, was the, the web first browser was the Internet Explorer e IE4 and then again uh, <coughs> yes uh, JavaScript and ECMA script history and uh, and guys again uh, <clears throat> uh, we are here uh, show, uh, saying uh, JavaScript uh, JavaScript and ECMAScript and uh, do we know about what's the uh, what what is the uh, our languages uh, best name best name means uh, they are, are we, even we are saying uh, uh, JavaScript JavaScript uh, there's how another two words uh, developers and uh, who are the authors using js and ecmascript and uh, we are on the ecmascript history and uh, here i am added 1995 to 2009 uh, timeline and again this is uh, this is not uh, stopped on 2029 uh, it's go through the 2022 and again uh, it will go through 2023 2024 like that and uh, 1995 as i said javascript was invented by brendan Nietzsche. And then uh, 1996, uh, Netscape 2 released with the JavaScript 1.0. And 1997, JavaScript became an ECMA standard. Uh, we are talking about ECMA standards, things, uh, things in uh, later sites. And the uh, in 1998, ECMAScript 2 was released. And uh, like that, uh, we are commonly using ECMAScript 5, ES5. It was released in 2009. And then again, uh, ES22 also released uh, for the uh, ES22 is the uh, latest one. Uh, it is released released in 20, uh, 2022 June. And uh, then again, guys, uh, this is a fun fact. Oracle, uh, do we know about? Uh, yeah, we are talking about JavaScript, JavaScript, JavaScript always, but. Uh, anyone know about who is the trademark owner of JavaScript? Okay, uh, Oracle was the trademark owner of uh, JavaScript. Therefore, <coughs> uh, therefore, there's uh, there's how uh, something uh, uh, even Oracle get the uh, trademark of this JavaScript. Therefore, authors and some other uh, other developers and other industry leaders uh, didn't like to go with this JavaScript one. Therefore, they suggest to use uh, JS instead of JavaScript. And then again, uh, in uh, using the TC39, uh, yes, this is the further uh, distancing of the language from the Oracle own trademark. The official name of the language is specified is specified by TC39. Uh, yes, you have you guys have the what are the have a curious about what is the TC39? Yes, we are coming to TC39 in later, and uh, they formalize the ECMA standards, and this the name is ECMA script. And uh, do we know about what is the ECMA? Anyone? Okay, ECMA is European Computer Manufacturers Association. And uh, as I am said, uh, the latest one is ECMA 2022, ECMA script 2022. It is, uh, we are saying is ES 2022. And then what is TC39? Okay, guys, <clears throat> TC39, uh, this is the ECMA International TC39. Uh, this is a group of JavaScript developers, implementers, academics, and more. And in here, uh, they are collaborating with the community to maintain the evolve, 
the definition of J's. Uh, simply, as I'm simply said, uh, they are the technical steering committee that manage JavaScript. It's J's. Uh, so in this uh, TC39, there's now uh, 50 to 100 or more than 100 uh, uh, group of developers in their uh, latest uh, in developers in the browsers uh, in Fire Firefox, uh, G Google uh, V8 engine uh, developers, and also uh, there's uh, so many uh, developers in here, and their primary task is managing the official specification for the language, and uh, regularly they are meeting. Uh, they are meet in uh, in each month and they submit uh, one ECMA script for one year it is submitted on uh, all the uh, year june june month and now you guys are have curious uh, how do we have uh, ECMA script what is the tc39 process okay guys uh, all tc39 proposals progress through five stages uh, yes as since we are programmers it is it is also started from zero base and for zero state uh, stage zero is the first one and stage fourth is the uh, uh, last one and this is the tc39 stages stage zero uh, they are allowing input into the specification it means it means roughly uh, someone on tc39 thinks it's a worthy worthy idea uh, to add the anything to uh, ECMAScript, so they they can uh, they can have a, write a proposal and submit to the uh, this TC39 stage. After that, it's going to the stage one, stage two, and stage three, and stage four. Uh, when stages uh, when when goes to these stages, on the fourth stage, uh, they are indicating that as the uh, okay if that proposal come to the uh, stage four uh, the next ECMA script release is release uh, that proposals uh, what what the feature you uh, added uh, you need to add this to the uh, ECMA script added to the uh, next ECMA script release and uh, again guys uh, <clears throat> i'll share this uh, tc39 proposals github they are they they are they are having a github repository uh, you guys can go to this github repository and know about uh, what are the things they have uh, they are doing and then again <clears throat> uh, again quick question uh, in the programming language they have forward compatibility and backward compatibility uh i'm i'm having a quick question from you guys is javascript uh is a forward compatibility one uh or backward compatibility one uh i'm asking these things uh okay uh let's uh let's interact with this session uh please raise uh, raise the hand uh if you guys think javascript is a forward compatibility la programming language Okay, guys, come on. I think it's backward compatible, right? Okay, uh, so can you raise the hand uh, if you guys think JavaScript is a backward compatibility programming language? Okay, we are getting responses. Nice. Wow. I don't know whether it's both, but uh, I have no idea. So I'm just raising it. Yeah, oh. I go for both. Mm. Okay, guys, nice. Uh, really happy you are interacting with the session. And uh, yes, you guys are correct. It is uh, backward compatible. Uh, most of the guys, yeah, most of the developers thinking it is, it's a hybrid one, but is it is not. Uh, okay then let's go to the forward compatibility and backward compatibility uh, simply backward compatibility is uh, 
that that uh, refers to the hardware of software system that can successfully use the interfaces and the data from earlier versions it means earlier you uh, you have developed anything you, uh, you can't you don't need to worry about those things it is always compatible with the latest version then forward compatibility is it is the opposite of that uh, forward compatibility is a characteristic of characteristics where a system supports content content produced for future versions of itself here we go and okay js is a backward compatibility programming language and uh, it is not forward compatible and despite many visions such they even incorrectly believe in myth that is and so therefore uh, js developers can write code with the confidence when you uh, write write the code it is even es 2050 uh, es 2050 have come in your browser and the all the things are working but when we come to html and css it is uh, they are forward compatible uh, they are not backward compatible so if you go to the uh, yes if you dug some on the html and css back to 1995 it's entirely possible it would not work sometimes it can be work but uh, it is entirely possible it would uh, not work today because this forward compatible it is not uh, it is not html css are not backward compatible okay guys uh, uh, we have only a uh, few minutes and uh, therefore uh, i am handing this session to uh, uh, kavindu and he will uh, go through with the js engine and this 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 must be the most interesting one uh, with this session kavindu uh, over to you bro thanks dulan uh, hey guys uh, i will share my slides ramesh then wala ta call edda and the Hey guys, uh, have you ever wanted to know how does uh, JS engine work behind the scenes? In this session, uh, we will go into the deep into uh, world of JS. Uh, is uh, having a deep understanding how uh, JS work uh, give us to understanding coding much better way and writing code uh, smarter and easiest ways. uh in addition to performing perform better in our job uh and also it can be super fun subject to learn uh let's move on to the uh, slides and uh, this is uh, js engine uh overview uh js source code parser ast uh, baseline compiler machine code documentation compiler and uh, optimize machine code uh, don't worry guys uh, if you don't understand uh, this yet uh, at the end of this session you will understand uh, every every step uh, okay let's go uh, environment um, a computer a compiler or, uh, even browser can't actually uh, understand the code written in js Uh, if so, how does code run? Uh, JS always uh, run in certain environment. Most uh, common ones are browser, uh, not JS. Uh, Runtime environment which uh, use us to run JS outside of the browser, usually in servers. Uh, so JS need to run environment, but uh, what exactly is in the environment? Uh, when we write the code in js we write it uh, human readable syntax with uh, alphabets and uh, numbers as mentioned a machine can't understand this type of code uh, this is why each uh, environment has engine uh, in general uh, the engine job is to take the code and transform into the machine code 
uh, each every uh, environment has its own engine. Uh, the most uh, common one now, uh, Chrome V8, which uh, also which not also used, uh, and Firefox, Spider Monkey, JavaScript Core by Safari, Chakra by Internet Explorer, and Hermes by uh, React Native. Uh, all engine work in similar fashion, uh, but there are difference between uh, each engine. Uh, it also important to keep in mind uh, engine is uh, simply a software. Uh, for example, uh, Chrome V8 is uh, software written in uh, C++ language. Then we have parser. So uh, we have an environment, and we have a engine inside that environment. The first thing the engine does to execute our code. Uh, check the code using parser. The parser uh, knows the syntax and rules, and uh, its job is go go through the code line by line and check if the syntax of the code is correct. If parser get an error, it is stop uh, running and send it send out error. If uh, the code is valid, parser generates something called the AST, abstract syntax tree. And few known passes are ACON and Scrima. Uh, then AST, abstract syntax tree. So our environment uh, has an engine, which has a parser and it generates AST. But what uh, is the AST and why uh, we need it? AST is a uh, data structure, uh, which is uh, not unique to the JS, but actually uh, used by a lot of other languages. Uh, some of them are Java, C Sharp, Ruby, uh, Python. Uh, AST is a simply a uh, tree data structure uh, of the code. And the main reason engine create AST instead of the compiling directly to machine code, it is easy to convert to machine code when we have a code inside the tree data structure. We can actually check out how AST look like. There are most uh, more AST uh, explorer tools. Uh, most popular one is uh, AST Explorer. Uh, let's find out how it uh, work. I think you can guys see my ST Explorer window. Uh, I already have a, a simple program. Uh, I declare error, uh, error array and simple function uh, with loop. Uh, on the right side, I have a AST for the my simple code. Uh, there are variable declaration and function declaration. Uh, we can expand that and also function declaration as well. So just uh, imagine uh, what uh, look like for the large real application. This is uh, also uh, a small application now. Uh, next, we can do the next slide. Uh, the common question every programmer has uh, asking about JavaScript. Uh, is it compiled or interpreted? Uh, for the uh, description, I need your valuable answers. Uh, I think, uh, uh, raise hand those who saying uh, JavaScript uh, is interpreted language. Yeah, one, two, and three. Yeah, I think there are three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
uh, then uh, raise hand who say uh, JavaScript is compiler language. I think no one here. Uh, so other people think it is neither compiled nor interpreted? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, then face and who uh, say something else? Something else? No. Okay, you guys raise hands like if you want to say alive or something like that. Still no? Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, we can what? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, depend on the JS engine. Uh, when JavaScript first came out, uh, JavaScript engine such as uh, uh, such as SpiderMonkey uh, that interpreted, but now most on engines uh, use compiler to optimize the code. For example, Google uh, came with the V8 engine combining the both interpreter and compiler. Okay. Then we have a baseline compiler. Early JS uh, engine had baseline compiler, and its uh, job is uh, to compile the JS source code and generate less optimized machine code. Uh, currently, some JS engine look complex uh, because they have uh, multiple baseline compilers. In modern JS engine, uh, the baseline compiler is interpreter. Then uh, interpreter's job is to take the AST that is created and transform into intermediate representation of the code. Uh, in short form, IR. Uh, so, uh, what is this IR? Uh, interpreter generate uh, from the AST. So IR is a data structure or code uh, which represent the source code. Uh, its role is intermediate step between code that's written in uh, JS and uh, machine code. Essentially, we uh, can think of uh, IR as a abstraction of the machine code. Uh, there are many type of IR, very popular uh, one is bytecode. Uh, here the picture which uh, demonstrate uh, IR role, uh, high level language, uh, best for the humans and bytecode, then machine code, best for the machines. And uh, end of this engine process, I will uh, show you how to view the bytecode using uh, VS code. And then, yeah, I think uh, you might be asking why we need to have IR? Uh, why not just compile straight to the machine code? There are uh, two primary reasons why engines use IR uh, as an intermediate step between high level code and uh, machine code. First one is mobility. When code gets uh, compiled to the machine code, it's need to match hardware that it, it's run on. Uh, machine code written for the Intel process and machine code written for the ARM process will be different. Uh, on the other hand, IR is a universal and can match uh, any platform. Uh, this makes a uh, conversation process uh, easier and more mobile. Uh, second one is optimization. Uh, it is easy to run optimization with IR uh, compared to the machine code. Uh, this is true both from the code optimization point of view and uh, hardware optimization. 
uh, then it is a fun fact uh, JS engine uh, they are not only using bytecode as a IR the languages which are also used bytecode you will find in C sharp Ruby Java uh, then we have optimizing compiler uh, optimizing compiler job is uh, to take the IR that interpreter created in our case is uh, bytecode and the transform into the machine code with uh, certain optimization uh, let's talk about the code compilation and some uh, fundamental concepts uh, one thing to keep in mind this is a huge subject uh, that take a lot of time to master so i i only uh, touch uh, it generally only uh, there are two ways to translate code into something that uh, machine can run using uh, uh, compiler or using interpreter the difference uh, between interpreter and compiler interpreter translate our code and execute it uh, line by line compiler instantly translate uh, all code into machine code before executing uh, there are pros and cons to the page compiler is fast but complex and uh, slow to start interpreter is slower but simpler and there are three ways to turn high level code into machine code first one is interpretation with this way we have interpreter it goes through the code line by line uh, and execute it uh, not so sufficient and second one is uh, head of time compilation aot here we have a compiler first uh, compiling the entire code and then execute it third one is just in time compilation uh, this is combination between aot and interpretation just in time compilation take the best from the both words of a dynamic uh, compilation but also give certain optimization to happen really speed up the compilation process we will uh, explain more about the uh, JIT compilation um, until now a brief idea about optimizing compiler uh, compiler takes the IR created by interpreter and generate optimized machine code then we have JIT compiler like I said most uh, of engine use JIT compiler uh, but not of all of them uh, for example Hermes engine uh, which React Native use doesn't use uh, JIT compiler uh, JIT compiler combine both AOT and uh, AOT compilation and interpretation has been certain uh, optimization to happen uh, let's uh, look deeper these uh, optimization and what exactly compiler does JIT uh, compiler uh, JIT compiler gets feedback by uh, collecting profiling data for the code that execute uh, if it is get uh, any hot code segment uh, code which uh, repeated repeats itself uh, hot, hot, code, hot segment will go through the compiler then use the information to the recompile more optimally when we run the code compiler compiler assumes that function we use the same type it's uh, used before so it saved the code with type in advance this type of code called the optimized machine code uh, and every time the code calls the same function again optimize optimize compiler will try to access the uh, same place in memory uh, but because js is dynamically type language at the sometimes we want to use the same function with um, different types in such case compiler will do the process of de-optimization and compile the code normally 
brief idea uh, about the JIT compiler. Mm, its job is to improve the performance by using hot code segment when the compiler execute code uh, that executed before. Uh, it assumes that the uh, types are same and uh, use optimized code that's generated. But if the type are different, the JIT compiler perform a uh, de-optimization and compile the code normally. Then uh, this is the additional factoring uh, V8 from V8 engine. Uh, in Chrome V8 engine, the interpreter is called ignition. Uh, and optimizing compiler is called turbo fan. Apart from the parser, there is a pre parser that's checked for the syntax and token. And uh, a spark plug is introduced, which is present uh, between ignition and turbo fan, which is also we call uh, fast compiler. Uh, and let's have a look at the process from the top. Uh, firstly, JS code. Uh, JS source code is passed to the parser. Parser divide divide the code into multiple nodes and uh, go through the code line by line and check if uh, have syntax uh, error. Uh, if the if there are any errors, code will stop the executing uh, and throw error. Uh, if all uh, check pass, it is converted to the AST. Uh, a data structure which uh, represents the code like a uh, tree data structure. It is easy to turn code into machine code from the AST. This AST is a pass uh, to the interpreter and convert to the byte code. At the same time, engine is uh, actually running the JS code. Uh, and byte code is used by the optimizing uh, compiler along with the profiling data. Uh, and lastly, optimizing compiler make the certain assumptions based on profiling data and produce high optimized machine code. Uh, previously, I said uh, I will show the how uh, get the byte code using uh, VS code. Yeah, I think uh, you can see my VS code. Uh, Tab. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I already uh, write a simple program. Uh, it's a small iteration function. Uh, then can open the terminal and uh, to the get byte code, uh, we need to type not dash dash. Byte code and then uh, type the file name. In our case, example, yes. You see, uh, uh, this is a very long list. Uh, if we if we want to the C, this is a, a huge uh, long list, and we uh, we can the we can see the uh, only some part of the part. Uh, we can use uh, instead of the this function, we can add more flag. Minus filter. We can use the filter tag and be equal to the. Our function name is print step. Execute our uh, print step byte code. This is the executing point, and this is the byte code. And also, we can export it to the uh, another file. Uh, we can add so put txt. Yeah. 
this is, is the bytecode for the uh, print step function and then okay <clears throat> and i think uh, we have only five to ten minutes to the uh, end of the session and uh, and uh, actually we need at least 30 or 40 minutes to go through all the things with the callback queue and call stack and event loop and uh, i'll give a basic uh, idea and uh, after that let's go to uh, let's go again to a uh, practical session and here we go okay <clears throat> and this is the example for the uh, callback queue and then again uh, call stack and event loop and yes as you can see as you can see uh, this callback queue sorry uh, this uh, ecs ecs means the uh, uh, execution contact stack and uh, that is uh, already in the javascript engine heap is uh, we are using for st store those uh, some kind of uh, memory allocations like that and then again uh, ecs is used for uh, as the uh, execution uh, so the uh, what to do with the ecs is uh, yes uh, as their name uh, its job is execute the code in that stack and uh, yes after uh, and again after the execution is done uh, it is already it is popping popping now uh, the code uh, which already uh, compiled and which, uh, sorry which already uh, run and then again uh, it's uh, when I, when i say it simply uh, if comes to the call stack something uh, then quickly uh, call stack is executing the things and then again uh, we are going to the web api uh, do we know about uh, where the web api is in uh, anyone what's the place where web api is, is in okay uh, Ruben, can you go? No, okay. Ruben is like uh, raising his hand from the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, yes, this is the uh, web API is in the uh, browser. Yes, and then again, uh, web API is a uh, nice, uh, nice thing uh, and. Uh, if you guys I, I i haven't more time to know uh, go through again with the uh, web api and i'm i i say something about these things and the in the web api there's how the window uh um, what do you call uh yes in the top of, top of the there's how the window and then again there's how set timeouts dom apis and the fetch apis local storage and consoles and yes there's how many things and uh js js environment uh browsers uh as fortunately browsers let uh let ecmascript to use this web api so uh, js engines can use web apis and uh, then again uh, we are go to the uh, callback queue uh callback queue is it's the these are the callback queue in the in that callback queues uh functionalities they are having some uh, things uh, many things that web api can do uh, as an example this there's have a set timeout uh, in the set timeout is in that function there's how uh, how many times we are adding the timeout then again what is the callback function then uh, as uh, as we uh, as we get the example this we are getting 3 seconds of uh, 3000 milliseconds of uh, break and then again uh, after 3000 milliseconds it is comes to the callback function for this callback queue and again the event loop functionality is he's uh, he's just like a uh how do you call it it's, uh, it, uh, it's, it's like, just like a gatekeeper and uh, then he's he's what he's doing is he's already checking the uh, that call stack is uh, empty or not uh, is the uh, call he's already checking that call, call stack is empty if the call stack is empty then again come to the uh, callback queue if there's have any callback function to 
uh, run, then get the callback function and put that into the uh, ECS. ECS means a callback stack. And then callback stack is uh, running that the, uh, sorry, then call stack running that callback function. That's the uh, how these things are going on. And then let's go to a small demo. Okay, guys, I uh, hope you guys can see uh, Jamboard, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then uh, this is the code. Uh, this is the code uh, we are going to know about uh, as the with the example. And here we go. <clears throat> Firstly, there's a global execution context. Global execution context means this. Uh, this is the this is our main code, right? Uh, so this global execution context. Firstly, this code is. Uh, you know this uh, all the codes are connected to the bytecode and then we have gec uh, calls uh, some some kind of call uh, codes and this code having in this gec and gec means the global execution context and in the global execution context as i am said they have uh, what are the things call console log i1 and then set time mode and then again welcome to adhk uh, this console log. Uh, so then uh, let's see how these things are working. Uh, firstly, it's coming to the this console log, right? And then console log is it's uh, this in the GEC. They have the console log one. It is console log comes to the uh, execution stack, and then uh, execution stacks work is quickly run that code, right? Then again, uh, this is uh, they are saying hi and wait so in the console it's printing hi and then the other other code is one is set timeout set timeout this this one is the uh, other one and here uh, console log uh, this have set timeout function as i'm saying test set timeout is the uh, fun is the uh, function of the web api then uh, call stack is getting this set timeout function and giving this set timeout to the okay this uh, this are the web api yeah you get this one and run this and after that this there's have the timer uh, it's running five seconds this this, this is this is this is running uh, asynchronously uh, now this set timeout is uh, it's going through the uh, now it is executed and then go to the this console log so after that as i am said before then again it is executing console uh, okay yes uh, then its console is writing this one after that this five second is uh, over then this callback function this uh say timeout means con the callback function this callback function is coming to this callback queue right and then uh this event loop is checking uh is this uh now at that point this gec one is already completed it means this console log is also done uh so this code is is never also completed then again uh, it means this gec one is popping out from the uh call stack and then there's have the callback function event loop is checking uh, is this uh, ecs is empty and then again come to the here is callback function is there yes the uh, callback function have, have callback function in here then again he is getting this callback function to here and then this is the callback function and then Again, this callback function is running. Uh, running callback function have only we are in set timeout. Then again, uh, it in showing this uh, console log. We are in uh, set timeout. Is up. And uh, okay, guys, this is the thing uh, we on the uh, running. Uh, how run an event loop and j's uh, callback stack and again uh, callback queue. 
uh, have you guys any questions uh, after this we are going to the uh, full uh, present uh, like uh, um, practical session uh, oh, this is the uh, this one and i'm pasting this code uh, hope you can see this uh, screen right yes okay yes uh here you go this is this 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 is the code we already talked about and this is the call stack with api and callback queue and here how the console okay and then uh, i'm running the code here you see uh, this coming uh go into the callback queue and then sorry uh this is the hi welcome to dsk we are in set timeout okay I am rerunning this. Okay. Here we go. This is the first one. Uh, hi. It's coming to the cold stack and then uh, it's running. Okay. Then come to the second line. It's that set timeout function. They have 500, uh, sorry, uh, 5000 milliseconds of uh, timeout. And then uh, what, what cold, cold stack? is doing is he is uh, running this function ru running this function and uh, after that this callback uh, sorry uh, set timeout function is coming to the web api and he is waiting for five seconds right okay yes right uh, no. Okay, now uh, the baby says timeout is going, and then uh, after this uh, timeout uh, going, we'll come to ADHK also done. Then timeout is the callback queue, and then callback uh, event loop is running. Then after that, uh, it's the welcome uh, we are in set timeout. And then again, guys, I'm having one thing, and yes, this is the last one. And I need. <clears throat> okay, I think you can see the code. Um, okay, uh, can anyone try this? Uh, how this is? Uh, is there any volunteer? Uh, just need to know what what are the console logs. Okay, let's let's go. Okay, nice. Yes, bro. Uh, yeah, the first line will be executed uh, first directly in the call stack. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, the function is put into the call stack. Mm -hmm. And then again, uh, inside, uh, it will execute the first console log. Okay, you're calling. Okay, there's function one in the below. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. the first console lock inside the function will be executing. Mm -hmm. Okay, inside function one, this one, right? Yes, inside function one. Okay. And then the, I think the set timeout function is not actually a set timeout, right? Uh, wait. Okay, it's there. It will be called, put into the call stack and it will be put into the API. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the for loop will be, uh added to the call stack mm -hmm. and it will start executing i think mm -hmm. at meanwhile uh when the three seconds is over from the web api it will be put to the call stack it will put to the call stack uh, call back you okay and mm -hmm. from there uh i think uh it will execute during the for loop maybe but no uh, it'll tend, uh, okay. It was just 10 count now, so it'll run faster. So after that, uh, the set timeout will, will... Oh, wait, the set timeout is... Okay. Oh, yeah. There, there won't be the... Yeah, nothing will happen in the set timeout, right? There's just the console log. Inside set timeout function will be added to the call stack. Mm -hmm. After that, the exiting function one. Then mm -hmm. after that, the console log exiting global execution. Okay. 
so first one is inside global execution one this then uh, inside function one then uh, inside set timeout function then exit in exit in function one then this one right yes okay yes uh firstly let's run this uh any anyone uh, again uh is there so anyone uh, who is uh trying this trying this code this never let me try okay uh yeah i think first uh, line number one will be executed first Ooh, okay. then it will go to line number 21 line so, number 21 right okay so that is a function so inside that function next line number four will be executed mm -hmm. so then line number six will be put so it will be going to the web api since mm -hmm. it is a set timeout function which is in the line 10 mm -hmm. so it will be on the web api so then it will start uh, executing line number 12. okay is it ending or is it a yes it is running uh, 0 to 10. okay so it yes. will run uh so then uh line number 18 will run uh okay. meanwhile this will still be on the callback queue the set timeout function Mm -hmm. uh, as I understand it, the minimum time is three seconds, but it is not guaranteed to run within three seconds because it's not a priority task. Mm -hmm. So if it is a promise, it will be put to the micro task queue and it will be executed while the for loop is there, I think. Mm -hmm. But since in this case, it will only be executed after line number 23, uh, which means finally. After this uh, one? Yeah, I think so. I, I might be dead wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice son. And uh, okay, uh, Aman, you are saying uh, first one is this inside global one, and then again inside function, and then exit in function one. After that, inside set timeout function, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, even after console log on the line twenty-three. Oh, it's. Finally, this is this this sun is uh, running, right? Yeah, that's what I you think. Said. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I might think that scope is no longer there. Function scope is, but I I I think it will still mm -hmm. have the scope. Uh, yeah, let's try. Pretty much that's how we run it. Yes. Okay. Let's run. Yeah. Yes, I'm right, right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And uh, how we need to discuss this. Uh, I think uh, yeah I, I I go go with the single also and uh, I just give uh, yes our time is over uh, just give one to two minutes okay guys hurry finally time when we mangar calling you again GC code deck GC code is never deck had enough GC code is never deck will like a call stack it right now but GC code a key time I think any some pool name may console logs function it over to me some pool no code decay other they are together in GC again does GC a category in the article run in a patanga? I thought a pollinator run in the menu maker inside global execution. Can a call stack a catava, a run one. Prashnak na, a kissy prashnak na, first take a call stack a catava, a run one. Then again, function can a menu may meet in the method in a may have digger, have the no, our take a function, a function, a create grant function, a run crane. It would take a heap picket the other in a coil the call crane, a run crane. Then menu method of VCK. Uh, function one key nigger uh, run gun. No? Function run key nigger one key nigger run card was say. I thought a method of function one key nigger run in all. Function one key nigger run on a bus may quote as a men may method a GZ good at a key nina men may function one key nigger function one nigger GZ code. GZ is to be taken on global execution is never taken. I thought a egg inside function one key nigger run in a ilangata set timeout kill function nakadal dina call kill and atom. Uh, set timeout function killer function nega. it has set timeout take it to the three thousand uh, seconds running set timeout function nega run current killer method out by set timeout take a run in a make or take a run in a now to know a baby i could do not three thousand times in milliseconds in you're not a pass you're gonna call back you get a 
මම කෝල් බෑක් කියුව එකේ ඉවෙන්ට් ලූප් එක තියලා තියෙනවා ඉවෙන්ට් ලූප් එක බලයි මගේ කෝල් ස්ටැක් එකේ මොකුත් දේවල් නැද්ද කියලා නැත්නම් ගෙනල්ලා දාවි මම ඒතර රන් කරන්න එයා වැඩේ බාර දුන්න වෙබ් api එකට එතනින් ගියා ඊට පස්සේ ෆෝ ලූප් එක තියෙනවා 0 to 10 මේක රන් වෙනවා මේක මේක මේ මේක අනිවාර්යෙන් රන් වෙන කෝඩ් එක මේක ඇසින්ක් වත් එහෙම කිසිම දෙයක් නැහැ මේක රන් වෙනවා රන් වෙන හිතමු අපි මේක රන් වෙන්න පටන් ගන්නවා මේක රන් වුණාට පස්සේ ඊළඟට යනවා මේක රන් වෙලා ඉවර වෙද්දී වෙබ් api එකේ අදාළ දේවල් ටික කළා ඉවර වෙලා තියෙයි ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ තාම කෝල් ස්ටැක් එකේ දේවල් තියෙනවා කරන්න ඉවෙන්ට් ලූප් එකට ඉවෙන්ට් ලූප් එක බලනවා කෝල් ස්ටැක් එකේ වැඩ තියෙනවද වැඩ තියෙනවා එහෙනම් කෝල් බැක් කියුවකට නිකන් ඉන්න කියලා එයා ඉන්නවා ඊට පස්සේ කන්සෝල් ලොග් එක මෙතන ඊට පස්සේ රන් වෙන්නේ එක්සිටින් ෆන්ක්ෂන් ෆන්ක්ෂන් 1 කියන එක ඒක රන් වෙන්නේ ඇයි එතකොට කෝල් ස්ටැක් එකේ තියෙන උඩ තියෙන GEC එකට අදාළ කොටස රන් වෙනවා ඊට පස්සේ මේ ෆන්ක්ෂන් එකට අදාළ කොටස රන් වෙලා ඉවරයි ඒ කියන්නේ මේ කොටස රන් වෙලා ඉවරයි මේ කොටස පොප් අප් වෙනවා ස්ටැක් එකෙන් ඒකෙන් අයින් වුණා ඊට පස්සේ කන්සෝල් ලොග් එක තියෙනවා අන්තිමටම දැන් හරි මේක රන් වෙලා ඉවරනට පස්සේ again event loop තාම මේකේ GEC එක තියෙනවා මොකද first දේවල් ටික තාම රන් වෙලා ඉවර නැහැ එතන 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 බලන්නේ එතකොට event loop එකේ call back queue එකේ call back function එකක් තියෙනවා කරන්න දෙයක් නැහැ තාම call stack එක free නැහැ call back it was a final one executing existing global execution context කියන එක රන් වෙනවා ඒක රන් වෙලා ඉවර වෙනාට ඉවරනාට පස්සේ මේ සම්පූර්ණ GEC එක ඉවරයි මේ සර්ට් එකේ pop up වෙනවා දැන් call දැන් call stack එකේ කිසි දෙයක් නැහැ දැන් event loop එකට පුළුවන් ඇවිල්ලා බලන්න call stack එකේ මොකුත් තියනවද ඇත්ත නැහැ මොකුත් call back queue එකේ තියනවද මොකුත් තියනවා ගෙනල්ල දාන්න මේකට මේක රන් වෙන්නේ බස් මෙන්න මේ ෆන්ක්ෂන් එක කෝල් ස්ටැක් කියුව එකට වැටෙනවා ස෉රි කෝල් ස්ටැක් එකට වැටෙනවා ඒක වැටෙනට පස්සේ ඉන්සයිඩ් සෙට් ටයිම් අවුට් ඇයි විල් එක්සිකියුට් ඇට් ලීස්ට් ආෆ්ටර් 1 සෙක් කියන එක අ ප්‍රින්ට් වෙනවා ඔකද ඇයි වෙන්නේ ඕකේ ඇන් ගයිස් ඕකේ දැන් කිව්ව නේද අ lahiru uh, if j is not forward compatible are there any ways around it uh, simply uh, oh yes uh, in here we are using uh, just like babel compilers are all javascript interactions are done through the web api are all javascript interactions are done interactions um coach what do you mean by interactions here like okay so all the functions other than the at time out there are other functions right uh, simple like console docs and all so are all those things handled by the web api because i yeah i only saw the time out function going through the uh, the callback queue i guess so only the web api is things will go into the callback queue right okay wait uh, i'll share so one one thing I think it's a good good question. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Uh, they have more thing do by uh, web API. It's, they have set timeout on DOM API things. DOM API means the uh, document object model one, and then again fetch one. Local storage is there. Console logs, as you said, and uh, location one. All the things are we are using web APIs. uh just to add to this uh, kavishka you know basically you know there are some functionalities in the javascript engine itself and there are some outside functionalities right so if you're writing a program using let's say any other language like java or something else so you have that external libraries right and for the web api is like external libraries for example it contains like promises and you know these uh, multi threading applications because you know the the main javascript only support single thread so in order to you know do these uh, set timeout set intervals and some asynchronous task you need some kind of multi threading area like right so these other libraries so there are some functionalities there are supported two other libraries those are called web apis okay guys have there any questions uh, coming back yeah. to the last example you showed 
Mm. I just wanted to know, like, uh, there was a set time of function, right? Mm. So in that set time of function, if you access a variable from the outer scope, uh, that function, will it be available when it executes? It is. Uh, can you can you repeat it again? So there was a set time of function, right? So it is executed last, uh, but the function scope is already ended, right? Oh yeah. So I just want to know, like, if the if that set time of function is using some variable from the outer scope, will that variable be still available by the time that function is executed? Okay, you are asking uh, in in our. Mm, example we are adding the function fun uh, set time mode function in the function one right yeah can you go to that screen where that code is there okay yeah oh, that's a good question i think it would right uh um, i mean that call stack is like emptying all the functions yes. right it's last yeah. in fest out uh, sorry that that uh, this one so it won't execute until that one is already uh, out yes. of the context yeah, but so, it doesn't uh, remove that uh, call E function, right? So yes. that concept is called, uh, you know, closure. I think there is a separate session, but yeah, you can go ahead and answer yeah. it. Okay? Yeah, I understand it, but there was a console log which comes after that function, which means if you want to execute that console log, it will it want to execute the function first and remove it, right? Uh, just, just can you go there, like? Uh, so yeah. i think so, closures remember the outside variables right they could host uh -huh. ah, okay. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That because we are sense. creating a closure here. that makes sense so yeah, yeah. Okay, this this is the one you're asking Aman, right yes yes uh there is a set timeout function right inside yeah. uh line number 10 Uh, did you put it outside the function? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you put it inside? Okay. Inside the function one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Inside the function one, can you declare a variable, something like name or something? No. Uh, out of out of out of that one function one. Out of function one, we are. No, no, above the console log inside, inside function. Inside the one? function one, outside of set function set time or function. Yeah, 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 yeah. There. Can you put like let name equal to something or something and call it inside the console log from the set time or function? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I understand. So this var name equal to ASD will be hoisted to the top of the file, right? So it will still be available, I think. Top of the file? I mean, sorry, I, yeah, top of the global execution. Oh, uh, no, okay, top of the function. <laughs> function, scope. function, function scope, sorry. Actually, what happens is when you call, when you, when you have this, uh, you know, callback function, it added to the, actually, it's when it goes to a web API, actually, it has to remember this, uh, you know, outer scope, actually, you know, it's called the closure. So uh -huh. how it's happened, it's actually we can you know talk about in detail. Cool. In yeah. From here inside global execution context, and then again, yes, SD is writing. Console log name is there. All right, shall we continue? Okay, guys. Uh yeah. I think, uh, yes, there's uh, more than one. Yeah, half. actually, I can see there's a lot of confusion. That's actually good. We can talk about them in our technical discussion. So, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Kaidu, uh, for uh, good support. And thank you guys for the good support. Okay.